Hi Sagis, how are you guys doing? Welcome to Sagittarius Tarot and another reading. Today's reading is going to be focusing on what you really want. Like what is your dream and let's see like how you can get there and much more information. So let us begin. Here with me I have the Psychic Tarot um, and we're going to be picking two cards. So let us see what it is Sagis current dream what it is that you want let's see exciting first card is the base chakra it's upright and it's number one and so this is talking about being really rooted so i think you're looking um and your dream is to be really grounded really rooted really solid right um so maybe you're looking for security for stability um, to as much as we don't have a grip towards the future or on the future or we can't control it but you want to have that sense that you know you're doing the best you can to secure it and also to feel solid at the current moment um, and secure and stable um, this could be also talking about your roots but like let us pick the second card to see what this is all about first Um, you have with it emotional loss um, in reverse. And I feel, yeah, like you are coming out. Um, the reason why you want all this security and stability is that you are coming out from um, a time where you were feeling like you have lost something that was dear to your heart, right? Uh, this could either, either be something that's material um, or it could... Yeah, like material or like material with an effect on your emotions, meaning something that as much as it used to bring you security, let's say, but it also um, used to fulfill you on an emotional level. And so you lost that. Or this could be talking about um, a loss of a relationship or a loss of a... Um, an object or something, I don't know, that was dear to your heart that you lost. This could also be talking about the loss of a concept. Sometimes we feel like we are losing time or we lost our youth or we lost a period of our life or we lost a window of opportunity. Sometimes we lose things that didn't even happen, but we felt that we missed that opportunity. So however that plays out, um, you are here. Um, now, in this moment, wanting and dreaming of being so much rooted um, in like um, security and stability and you want to feel strong and grounded and all of that because I feel like this is maybe this might have been like a compensation. Um, this might have started as a compensation um, behavior towards what you have lost here. Um, it's as if you were feeling so shaken, so now you don't want to feel that anymore. You want to just, you know, prove to yourself that you're so strong. Um, but whether this was the cause or not, you are on the right path to think what you think. Your dream is valid and it will bring you a lot of good things. The nice thing about it is that it holds the number one and this card holds the number five. Five and one equals six. And six is the card of ultimate love and being nurtured and supported by the universe and by others. And I think you're going to feel, you're going to, you know, realizing this dream not only will make you feel secure, grounded and stable, but it will also enclose you and envelops you with so much love during that journey. That was very beautiful. Now let us look with the lover's oracle about what is your um, dream job here no sorry like um what how can you get to that dream job because we already talked what was that one um did i say dream job i'm tripping <laughs> it could be right it could be a dream job so yeah it could be <laughs> or it could be a dream something else so let us see what you will get
Okay. Look inside yourself. Examine what is causing you to feel this way. The past is now behind you. Release and embrace new possibilities. A new path is now available to you. Follow it with faith. Yeah, so from what I can tell here, um, really the only way for you to get there, to get to this ultimate goal within your journey of being very rooted and grounded and stable and secure. And remember, we're in like, there's a lot of planet in Taurus right now. And, you know, this is literally the energy of Taurus. And so that is truly possible. Um, and in order for you to do that, you really got to take a good look inside yourself. Examine what was the cause for this. Remember what we said, like we were saying, maybe this started as a reaction to an emotional loss that you healed from. Um, and this might have been caused by something else, but regardless, it is valid. And so this is talking about looking inside yourself and really just determining and deciding if this is, you know, a temporary reaction or if this is really truly what you want in the upcoming future. Um, and the only way to get there is really to release the past. And I see you here already. You've done that, right? Like I, I think you already released the past or maybe you are in the process of doing it and you're embracing new possibilities. If you notice the past here is the green card and how to get there with the dream job, you know, you get both red colors. So I think this is talking about like really embracing this new opportunity because a new path is now available to you. You just got to follow it with faith. So let us see what qualities um, do you possess right now that will prove to be very pertinent towards this dream? Like we said, dream job or dream situation or dream lifestyle or dream want or whatever that dream is. We have here the Witch's Tarot. So we're going to be picking two cards to talk about that. First card is the Queen of Wands, and that's a lot of fire energy. That's a lot of nurturing from the universe, a lot of nurturing, and there's just sun. You can see the sunflowers there. You can see the feline energy here. Beautiful, beautiful energy, and it is coupled with the King of Cups. What a beautiful um, couple or combination, right? And these are the qualities that you have. And I love it because here you are embodying the best of the best. The best quality of the King of Cups is that he can control his emotions no matter what. No matter what the circumstances, even if emotions are running rampant and even if everything around you is feeling chaotic, there is this sense of mastering your emotions and controlling and being you know, stable and secure on your throne regardless of the emotions around. And that indicates that you master controlling your emotions. And with the Queen of Wands, you master being the fire, right? The creativity and the passion and the love and the sexual and creative energy and all of that. And the beautiful thing with the Queen of Wands is that you don't, you don't only just have her qualities, uh, meaning like, um, that you emanate all that fire. She also has the quality to nurture others. So she takes that fire and she sort of inspires others. And us, and everyone aspires to be her, right? And be with her energy. And so these two qualities are amazing. And these two qualities are what you're going to be using um, to realize that dream of yours or of feeling finally grounded, right? The base chakra upright talks about you are no longer floating. If you were feeling like you were floating due to that emotional, due to an emotional loss that you suffered earlier or prior in life, right? That sort of, um, you know, didn't make you feel grounded. And so you were feeling a little bit at loss or floating. Um, whether or not, um, the good thing about all of this is that your amazing passion and the fact that you share it with others, you share that passion for your goal with others and you inspire them to 
pursue their own goals as well with the same passion and fire that you have. And the fact that no matter what circumstances bring and no matter what emotions surface, you still have control over everything and you're like calm and laser focused and just really going at it. This is embodying really the Taurus energy as well. And like I mentioned previously, we are in a very Taurus energy um, lately. A lot of planets are there. Um, I think Jupiter is there, Uranus is there, um, the Sun is there, like there's a lot of Taurus energy. And you know what Taurus has is determination and it builds slowly and steadily. It might be a little bit slow, like I said, slowly, right? But it's steadily and eventually it will reach its target. And it's bullheaded, right? It's got this determination. And the cool thing about this is that you're taking that Taurus energy, but you're also infusing it with your fire Saji energy of just inspiration and creativity. And you're infusing it with the complete control of emotions of the um, water signs. And all of this is going to make you feel like a bull, like very steady. You know, very rooted, very grounded. Beautiful. Now, let us look with the angels and ancestors. Um, where can you find help or assistance? Is it the universe helping you? Is it people you know? Is it yourself? Is it certain things that you have? Is it serendipity? Is it circumstances? It could be any of these things. So let us look where you can find the help that you need along this journey. The first card you get is Shaman, Trust and Higher Forces. And so that was the first thing I said um, when I was counting all the ways or all the places you can find help. And it's in the Higher Forces. It's in the universe. So you got to trust that life is on your side, right? With this card. Life is on your side. The universe is on your side. And there is this feeling of divine timing because this looks like a clock almost. And there is this feeling of divine timing. And I see here a lot of trinkets that might, you know, if the wind blows, they're going to make a sound. And so that means you're going to, you're going to know when it intervenes. Just, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. And you know, whenever the universe is going to make it all happen, you'll hear, you're not going to miss it, right? Like you're going to hear the noise. You're going to hear the sounds and the feathers here in, um, also indicates with the owl, the owl is like intuition and nighttime. And with the feathers here too, is like, you got to listen to your intuition. You got to tap into whenever you need clarity, just look inside yourself, right? Like it said here, look inside yourself and you're going to find the answers you seek and just be patient like a bull, be very patient and trust in higher forces. So let us look at the second card that comes with this. You get autumn, release the old and rest. Beautiful. And so I think that in autumn, this is where you're gonna, like the last piece of the puzzle is going to fall. First of all, we have this crescent moon here, reminding us of nighttime again. And we have these dead leaves, right? And the autumn card usually um, is sort of like, you know how this, Really, this card, Trust and Higher Forces, is already reflecting, you know, where you can find help. It is reflecting the help you can get there. Look inside yourself. It's practically the same message. Trust and Higher Forces, look inside yourself, right? For intuition. And that second card of where you can find help is all about releasing the old, right? And resting. And it literally is the same message as, almost the same message as this card that was saying how you can get there. That said, the past is now behind you, release it and embrace new possibilities. And so I think with these two cards here, um, the beautiful thing is there's an element of rest. And so that tells me that you're going to be really hunkering down, hustling, um, doing the work, um, working really, really, really hard to secure a better future. And you're going to keep at it all summer, all spring first, and then all summer. And then comes autumn. I think that's when you're going to, you know, the higher forces are going to intervene and you're going to know that you made it, that the universe just sort of helped it manifest. And it's then that you will be able to rest, you know, because 
it's all happening it's all coming true beautiful and i love this red hues that are all over the place here notice that you have these red here that line here going from your base chakra feeling grounded rooted to releasing the old to looking in the, inside yourself right and embracing new possibilities and embracing your fire and then we had that emotional loss that now you have control over with the king of cups if you look at the colors it's like sort of blue and then you're going to trust the universe and have patience with this continuity of blue and green um to allow it to you know help have it all unfold sort of so now with the angels um, answers we're going to be looking if there's anything that needs your attention regarding all of this and so the first card that you um, will get is a no literally there's nothing that needs your attention there is nothing that needs your attention and whatever is for your own good is going to happen. And whatever that is not for your own good is not going to happen. And that's why you got to trust in higher forces. Everything is going to work out accordingly. Also, this is if you're expecting things to happen at a certain time, you got to trust the divine. Everything is just going to happen the way it does. You don't have to intervene in any sort of way when it comes to how all of this unfolds. You got to just focus on your goal and keep working at it diligently, determined, passionately. So let us um, pick another card that goes with this. Success. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? You will achieve your goal in the autumn. And you know what's funny is that in autumn, which is like around September, October, November, um, that's right that's where up till the middle right from the middle of september up to the middle of um december and that's where um, we will have an experience the last time pluto will be retrograding in capricorn it's in autumn in that season and that's the last time we well at least i will ever witness it or you if you're my same age or like others i think like it's gonna yeah like Maybe, I don't know, in how many hundreds of years, but we will never be witnessing Pluto in, a, in Capricorn anymore. It's going to move completely to Aquarius. And Capricorn is a sign of building wealth and building prosperity and building stability. Um, and I love this because um, your whole reading here talks about building that base chakra. And the fact that it's going to happen whenever pluto is going to come back and retrograde to capricorn is just speaks volumes and if you're going to be successful you're going to do it and you know what i also love about this astrological transit and this message here that aligns with it is that when pluto comes back to capricorn it's going to it's going to retrograde back in the sign right and then goes direct until it leaves back to aquarius and it's going for the last time put a closure on everything that went down from whenever Pluto first entered Capricorn. Um, let me, I'm gonna pull up here. I just wanna see like where, wait, when did, so when did Pluto first enter Capricorn? And that was in 2008, right? Um, and with that question, I'm going to ask when will Pluto go in Capricorn again after 2024. I don't know. Like, oh, it's going to take it like 226 years. So yeah, not in my generation, not in the next generation. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I told you it's important. And Pluto first entered into Capricorn in 2008. So whatever you started back in 2008, right? Um, all that journey up till now, whatever emotional loss you suffered from that time, right? Till now, that forced you or pushed you or fueled you or motivated you. I'm not going to say forced you, motivated you to 
build whatever you want to build and that you've been trying to build since 2008 um, to secure your base chakra, to feel grounded and secure and stable. That's what's going to manifest when Pluto returns in Capricorn. That's what's going to manifest in autumn if you keep at it, if you keep doing, you know, what I told you to do and you're going to be successful. And that's the best closure you can ask for. That's the best closure someone can ask for. Amazing. And then you'll be able to finally savor and really appreciate Pluto and Aquarius without, you know, the, remin the reminiscent of the past of Capricorn. Because so far, as much as we've seen Pluto and Aquarius many times, we're still within that Pluto and Capricorn energy because we are expecting that retrograde. But after that, then you can focus for the next, um, I don't know, like... Um, 16 years or so, whatever, you know, you have enough time, you'll have more than 14 years to just um, appreciate Pluto and Aquarius, <laughs> right? I like this so much. Well, I'm going to be pulling two last cards from the Gaia Oracle, um, just because, you know, um, to see if there's any additional messages that the cards want to share with us. But it's a beautiful reading overall. I mean, before I even pull these cards, Look, you suffered an emotional loss, right? Um, whether at the beginning of the second 2008 or during all that time from 2008 till 2024. And that was sort of like, that hurt a lot, right? That hurt a lot, a lot, a lot. And because of that, you, not because of that, but it's sort of like, changed something in you that fueled your need for more security, stability, and more rootedness and more groundedness. Because whether it's because of the emotional loss or before it, and that sort of aggravated it, you felt like you're floating and you felt like you don't have an anchor and you needed to belong. You needed to have an anchor. You need to be rooted to a certain country, to a certain land, to a certain property, to a certain feeling also of stability, security, that nothing can, you know, change you. Maybe because you were too terrified of that emotional loss. Regardless, that's what pushed this, right? Even if it was a reaction, that's what pushed all of this. And so this desire has been growing on and on and on and on and on. And it tells you that the only way you're going to get there is if you release the past and embrace new possibilities, right? Because a new path is now available to you. And the way you're going to get there is by also looking inside and examine really what is causing all of this and why you're really driven. And the thing is, you possess, you possess both qualities that will help you get there. First, you got that fire, that passion, um, that not only that it's really um, contagious, right? Like you, you have that, but you also it's the way you relentlessly pursue this is so inspiring to so many other people. And at the same time, you have complete control of your emotions, no matter how many waves or tsunamis life throws at you. And so you're really in control. And these are two amazing qualities that really make it make sure that you will get there. Now, you got to trust in the higher forces, right? You got to trust in divine timing. You got to trust you got to tap into your intuition whenever is needed. Um, and you got to trust that things happen in their own time. And that time is in the autumn. Whenever Pluto retrogrades back in Capricorn, you're going to be able finally to release the old. Because now, from now till autumn, in spring and summer, you're going to bury yourself in work. Doesn't, like, not work, like work related to this goal, right? Let's just say that. Work related to this goal. And so you're going to like have your head um, straight, just like hustle, 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 work hard, driven by passion, having control of your emotions and doing all that. You want to feel secure, you want to feel stable, you're doing all of that. But even in the background, you still didn't release completely the past. And so the moment I see you releasing it is when autumn comes, you're going to release that old. And finally, in the middle of the night, you have the owl here, you have the, you're going to hear a sound. Um, there is that moment of divine timing where the last piece of the puzzle just unlocks, you know, and just you just finally feel that everything is manifested. And for a second, you can feel, shit, I finally feel secure. I finally feel stable. Or I finally, it doesn't have to be like you released, the, you achieved the whole goal. Maybe you have put the first stepping stone, but you'll be like, shit, I made this happen. I have put the first stepping stone in a long journey of feeling secure. Because... 
from what I can see, you haven't been able to do that for all these 14 years, right? And you're finally going to be able to rest. And what a glorious feeling. And, you know, what? nothing needs your attention but just dedicating yourself to this goal. That's it, because you will be successful. And so after that short summary, let us look at the last two cards from the Guy Oracle to see what are the two additional messages from the universe um, for my dear Sagis. Awesome. The first card is thinking of you, a loving thought, serendipity. How awesome, right? And you're, you're, the colors of the sunset here also reminds this autumn red um, energy. And so serendipity is like going to be unfolding in your life and that's the work of the higher forces so you gotta embrace it whenever that happens with you and yeah the universe is thinking of you if this is about another person they're thinking of you nine plus two is eleven eleven is the number of magic and so even in the darkest moment you are never alone even when the waves get so high and you're trying to stay in control. Remember, the higher forces love you. What a beautiful message. Let us look at the second card. And it came upright as well. A lot of upright cards, by the way. Have you looked? Everything is effing upright. Everything is upright, except the emotional loss card. That means you're getting over it. How awesome is this? How awesome is this? This is very rare, Saji. All right, now let us look at the second card. Okay, and you get the yin and yang in reverse, creating harmony through balance. Now, yin and yang represent balance, right? And it's number 40. And when it's in reverse, it still indicates, you know, balance. But when we're like that, right, when we're upright, let's see, right? When we're upright, I just want to Google the yin and yang symbol again. So, so the yin is the black, right? And the yang is the white. Now, if you look here, the symbol is always like presented as white and black. But it's red, yin, yang, instead of, instead of it being red, yang, yin, right? Um, and so one of these energies is like the re receiving energy. And another one, wait, will be the, just so I wouldn't confuse them, the um, active energy. So let us, one second, difference between yin and yang. Yeah, exactly. So the yin, which is the black, represents um, the moon, the water, darkness, passivity, intuition, softness, contraction, and yielding in the universe. While the yang, which is white, represents masculine forces, sun, fire, light, activity, rational thoughts, hardness, expansion, and assertiveness. And if you look here, they, they reversed in this um, illustration the um, this symbol. So here the yang comes first, here the yin comes first, and in the third eye chakra. And so when we do um, reverse them, I see here the yang coming first and then the yin, right? Because if we read yin yang, that's receive and then do. But because it became reversed, it's still about balance, but it has a more focus on the yang, which is more the doing, right? The fire the activity, the thoughtness, the hardness, the hardworking, um, in order to expand, right? The assertiveness, being rational. And so this is really saying that once you do all of this hard work, you will receive the yin, which is receptive, which is passive, which is receiving and resting and feeling soft, right? And there is this butterfly here indicating that transformation. And I love it. And if some of you are turning 40 at, in autumn, um, this is also a special message for you because um, with the 29 here, so maybe it's something that you 
we're not able, we like you started at the age of 29 and weren't able to accomplish it and you will accomplish it now at the age of 40. That's a very specific message, right, to some of you. Let me just see the difference um, because that's really interesting. And so if you do 40 minus 29, that's 11 years. And so that's 2024 minus 11, that's 2013. So maybe for some of you, just very specific niche, something that um, you suffered an emotional loss back in 2013, um, you were 29, and now you're going to be able to finally feel like you have got your closure. Um, and you're sort of like, you set a challenge for yourself and you sort of want it now. And so you're proud of yourself and you feel finally that you... You have balance now, right? Like as if you felt that some the universe owed you something because of that. And so you've been working hard to sort of rectify the balance of energy. And now that you achieve that, you feel like complete again. I love it. I love, love this. All right, with this, I'm going to end the reading. I love you so, so much, dear Sagis. Stay blessed, aligned, and connected. Um, first of all, don't forget to go to my Instagram page, Easy Simple Bliss and follow it, you're going to find a lot of like um, information that I share with you daily there that are not part of this reading. You'll love it. Um, second of all, you can also like um, book uh, private personal readings there too. Um, second of all, um, thank you for watching till the end as usual. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for clicking the like button and the share button and the subscribe button. If you are watching this video and you didn't subscribe yet, please do. Um, you can click on the Sagittarius logo to icon. It, um, it's for free and it will help my work reach a wider audience. We need to get these subscribers up, up, up. Thank you so, so much. You can also leave me down comments below. Um, I love to hear from you. I love you. Mm.